Hello guys, I think it's quite obvious by the title that today we'll be talking about shark attacks. I mean, we couldn't get any more obvious than the text emote representation of the word shark attacks. Please take note that this video is nothing but a little poke and a little fun at physics and logic. And I do acknowledge the deaths that have occurred due to shark attacks. And I in no way intend to demean these people who have gone through unfortunate incidents. As of right now, two people have died as a result of shark attacks. And approximately 12 people have been injured as of 26 October this year. I think we can all acknowledge that sharks are absolutely beautiful. They have the ampullae of Lorenzini and the lateral line, which translates to them being able to detect the slightest of wave disturbances, as well as electric impulses that are released by any creatures underwater. Yet, despite the fact that they have subcutaneous sensors, to make these impossible and bizarre detection tasks, they apparently attack us because they mistake us for seals from below. Because apparently when you're lying on that surfboard with your arms and legs sprawled out, you look like a seal. Okay. When a shark gets flipped upside down, it goes into a trance-like state and could stay there for up to 15 minutes. This is what you call tonic immobility. Now, there is actually very subjective and inconclusive studies regarding this feature of sharks. Why do they have it? We don't know. We don't really have a reason that fits. Great white sharks and tiger sharks are actually hunted by offshore pods of orca whales by taking advantage of this mechanism. So again, it doesn't really give sharks an advantage if flipping them upside down would render them immobile. One night, I got a bit too excited. And I wondered, what if I could turn a shark upside down while he was attacking? And I decided to indulge in that little problem with totally accurate math. I know what you guys must be thinking. And no, I did not go into this without my assumptions. So this is a proper, proper breakdown of a problem. And like any normal proper science evaluation class, I determined what assumptions I was taking. So, the assumptions are that sharks are more or less almost identical, but totally not a rod or a disc. Secondly, there is no such thing as friction or drag when it comes to calculating how much force would be required to turn the shark upside down. And also, sharks have consistent density. And yes, it's pretty obvious, as you can see here, that there's no way that the density would ever vary across the shark's body. I mean, seriously, isn't it obvious? Yes, you're welcome. I am also assuming that I will be able to apply a constant force on the shark as I'm turning him underwater. Lastly, I am assuming that there's no change in the buoyancy of the rotating shark. I am not going to pretend to fully know the meaning behind this word, but to work out a solution to this problem, I looked up something that I have learned before, but not properly at school. We are going to use rotational inertia, which is known as the angular mass. It's a tensor that determines the torque needed for a desired angular acceleration about a rotational axis. So basically, it's like inertia for an object to spin. And rotational inertia can be linked with kinetic energy 
from there of which I would be able to calculate the force required for the object to rotate. With the way the shark is being rotated, it, we will have to use the rotational inertia formula for the disc, which shows that I, denoting rot rotational inertia, equals to half times the mass of the object times the square of the radius of the object. Through those calculations, assuming we are turning a male bull shark, which has a mass of 95 kilograms and the radius being 0.5 meters. By the way, you can't actually find the wingspan or radius of the bull shark, which I found really, really quite disturbing. I, I assumed that uh, we'd know a little bit more about the shark and at least publicly I'd be able to find that sort of information, but no, apparently not. Apparently boat sharks are just not important enough. Hashtag shark lives matter. Please. Anyway, without further ado, through basic calculation, which might be wrong, but I don't really care, it should be decently accurate enough, I, the rotational inertia, for the object to spin would be approximately 10 kilograms meter square. That being the unit. It's not really important, but whatever. From there, because the kinetic energy of that object equals to half times the rotational inertia of the object times the square of the angular velocity of the rotating object, I can calculate well, the, the kinetic energy. So since the object rotates for half a revolution, that means it rotates for pi radians, 180 degrees. But this isn't, it has to be put in radians, which makes it pi. And again, we have to assume a time value. So in this case, I assume that one would be able to rotate a shark in approximately five seconds trying my best to maintain proper si significant figures i find the square value of the angular velocity to be about 0.39479 radian square per second squared again the, the unit doesn't fucking matter okay just don't look at me like that after that we multiply the i value being 10 times half times omega square which I don't feel like reciting the value again because it feels embarrassing, okay? It equates to about 2 joules of energy. That is maintaining the proper significant figures again. From there, the work done is the amount of energy I had to transfer to actually make the object rotate. So the kinetic energy that this shark is enjoying, clearly, no shark, there is not a single shark that hates being rotated upside down and made to fall into a, forced into a trance-like state. That's totally fine, but I digress. The work done is the energy I give to make the shark rotate 180 degrees. So force times the distance of the shark having rotated equals to the kinetic energy. Law of conservation of energy, you know, all that go bullshit. It's not bullshit, but you know what I mean. So the distance is pi r, r again as I said being as is assumed to be 0.5 meters, could be wrong, I don't care. That makes the distance that the shark rotated, half a revolution, uh, equal to 2, 2 meters. And from there, the force would equal to the kinetic energy divided by the distance of that rotation. So that equates to one newton, which is approximately one kilogram of force, which is pretty easy. Sound like I, I think we can do that. I think anybody could do that, probably. Right. In the course of asking some experts in the math and physics field, I got a couple of masters in these respective fields. Throw me hundreds and hundreds of formulae. One of them, for example, being uh, requiring me to integrate each and every point on the shark with the distance of the rotation all those points would do so that I could 
calculate the energy expended that was lost to to go against and override the drag force because in water there is a significant drag force however when i asked him further he would just he just sarcastically asked me i don't know how do you integrate like some fucking smart ass and from interactions like that, I I learned something. Just a small little thing. Don't be intimidated by these cucks who think that they know everything. Because at the end of the day, all this stuff that I came up with, this series of calculations I came up with, I came up with these calculations before asking anyone. Because I wanted to be sure. I checked a lot of times and even if they end up being wrong I am still very much proud of the fact that I at least asked and I tried and with common sense involved it does it is actually easy to turn a stationary shark however it is import uh, it if, if we were being serious here if, if a shark actually came to attack us from 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 below us by might I mention because the reason why sharks attack you Technically, they always attack you from underneath you because they see your shadow apparently now whether that philosophy is true Doesn't matter because with the momentum that the shark has Technically if if you got pushed by the shark up into the air Which which always happens with seals and other prey that get hunted by sharks like this You, you can't exactly expect to turn the shark mid-air and it doesn't really make sense so what was all this calculation for? Shut up. 